Hi, this is Dr. David Brown, and this podcast is part of a series I'm doing for the CSIT 1110 Introduction to Information Technology class at Pellissippi State Community College. This podcast will talk about how to build a basic web page from scratch. In the next few podcasts, I'm going to introduce some of the basic HTML tags and talk about page layout in HTML pages and finally show how to put the pages up online so that they're accessible to everyone. So what I wanted to do here at the beginning is show the materials for this week, orient you to where everything's located, and then get started and build just a basic page. And I would suggest if you haven't done this process before that you try to follow along. And after you've watched this podcast, do this yourself and make sure that you can do it. So first, if you look at the materials for this week, there's some references specific to HTML. There's a good HTML tutorial here. If after watching my podcast, you go and do this HTML tutorial, by the time you're finished with about half of that tutorial, you should be able to do the assignment for this week. And I think you'll be pretty confident with your HTML knowledge. So this material here under HTML tags shows what I'm going to do in the subsequent podcast. This first podcast is going to talk about just building a web page from scratch. I'm only going to talk about a few tags. The next one will introduce some most of the basic HTML tags and then I'm going to show how to do some page layout before showing how to put that up online. Also the source code that I'm creating over here is linked right here in HTML page skeleton so you can use that yourself to get started. So um, the first question I'm usually asked when we do this project is why do we do this? (laughs) Why do we want to create HTML from scratch when you can generate it from so many programs and I've got some answers in here because I'm I'm used to getting that question and I, I do think that first off it's it's really a matter of literacy um, if you don't know HTML I think it's kind of an intimidating thing and when you do it opens up a lot of things that you never knew were possible in some of your online environments you're, you're able to tweak things that you didn't even know you could do secondly if you're continuing on in programming if you have to create a server program that creates HTML dynamically which is pretty common then you will have to write a program that generates HTML and if you can't write HTML you can't create a program that writes HTML so knowing how HTML is generated what it looks like what the tags are that's important if you're going to go on and do some more sophisticated web programming The last one I've titled this power here, but it's basically that a lot of people are intimidated by this and it seems mysterious if you've never looked at it before. And I think after going through this, you'll see it's not very mysterious and it's not really that complicated. So part of it is just to get you over any fear you might have. And also, uh, I think it's basically a literacy thing in today's world. The web is used everywhere. And I've pointed this out here. It really is a universal language. It's the language of the web and the web is used all over the world so it's important to to get a feel for it I will go through here and uh, mention some of these other things about HTML before we get started HTML is a plain ASCII text file that just means that there's no formatting characters in that I- I'm using a Mac right here and I'm using text edit and I've told it that this is just a plain text file with no formatting characters If you're on a Windows machine, one of the easiest things to use would be Notepad. Notepad stores files by default as ASCII text, but if you use WordPad, WordPad's default format is uh, RTF, and RTF has formatting characters in there. So if you're using WordPad for this assignment, make sure when you save it that you tell it that you're just going to have ASCII text. The other thing to keep in mind is the files have to have an HTM or HTML extension to the file like I have here. If you forget to do this, when you load the file up, you'll just see your code back and it won't actually mark up the page or create what it's supposed to. So that's the symptom of that if you forget to do that. HTML is not a programming language. Sometimes people act like that if you learn HTML, it's equivalent to learning a programming language. It's nothing like it. Um, it, Programming languages are much more extensive. They have variables. They have conditional statements. They have assignment statements, they have loops, Uh, HTML has none of those things. You can add some interactivity with JavaScript. JavaScript is 
something that's used with HTML, as is cascading style sheets, which, which is an extension that allows you to modify uh, the behavior of some of these tags. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, I did use the word tags here. The commands in HTML are called tags. The tags look like this. They have an angle bracket, a tag name, and then an ending bracket. And they look, you know, like this. This is the bold tag that makes text bold. Uh, this is one of these that I was talking about that's sometimes followed by an ending tag. Uh, you would actually use this in a web page like this. You would uh, turn bolding on, then you'd have some text that you wanted bolded, bolded, and then you would have a slash B at the end that says, this is the start of the bolding, and the slash B means that's the end. This is a forward slash. That means that you turn bolding back off. If you forget to do this, if you forget to put an ending tag for one of these that requires it, in this case, the rest of the text in the page would be bolded because it was never turned off. Um, another point is that tags are case insensitive, which means that basically you can use either upper or lower case for the tags names. By default, you should use lowercase. That's really the standard, but uh, the br browser would take both of these as the same. Uh, whether and you could actually even mix those, but stick with the lowercase. I would say there's one other thing about the tags; they're not quite as simple as I've shown here. Some of the tags have attributes that will modify their behavior, and we'll we'll go through one of those. One of those we're going to look at some of the attributes for is the body tag here to show that we can actually modify how the body of the page is rendered. We can actually change backgrounds or uh, change colors for the body. So let's go through and talk about this skeleton page that I've created here. First, you'll see that we have a tag introduced called HTML. This is one that has an ending tag, and you'll see it down here. So your HTML starts off with the tag HTML, and it ends with slash HTML. So all the HTML is here. There's actually two parts in here. There's a heading section, and then there's a body section. We're not going to talk much in the first few podcasts about what goes inside the heading section. We're just going to look at this one tag that, that is title. All title does is whatever you put between the beginning and ending titles, it's going to put up here on my browser in the, the tab name. Sometimes that would be up here in this part. It depends on what your, your browser does with that, but it basically puts a title at the top of the page. If we were going to do JavaScript, we could put some JavaScript in here. That's another thing that sometimes is you will see in the uh, header section. I'm just going to make a note of that here. A another thing that we might put here is CSS style sheet information that would modify the way some of the tags work. But for our purposes right now, this one tag is all we're going to put in there. One th thing to keep in mind is the things that appear here in the heading section do not appear in the content. Uh, so all of the tags that we're going to look at over the next couple of podcasts are going to go here inside the body. Uh, today all we're going to do is just put a little content in and see what that does. So what I've done here is created this page, saved it as page1.html, and what I'm going to do now is open up a new tab here and tell it to open, and you can do this in whatever browser you have, tell it to open the page that you've created. Now you see I do have the HTML extension there. So I'm going to open that and we see the page here. And notice again, here's my title. It actually did put it up in the title bar, but it's also on the title of the uh, tab. If I change this, and I probably should do that right now just to show you how to do that. Now that we've got this page loaded, let's say I change this and uh, I'll change it like this. I'm going to go in and say my second page. Okay. Now what I need to do to see my changes reflected over here is first save this file again, save the file, and then go over here and just tell it to reload it. And now you see the title has changed. Likewise, if I change something here in the content and want to see that reflected, now that I've got the file open, all I need to do is hit reload. The last thing I'd like to show you here is HTML tag attributes. I mentioned that tags can have attributes here when we were looking at some of the points to remember about HTML. So far we've looked at these tags, and the body tag has some interesting attributes that I'd like to discuss here. So let's look at the body tag and the BG color attribute. Here I can apply um, a color 
What I'm doing here to modify the behavior of the body tag is to tell it that the body, which contains all of the content, is going to have a background color of red. So I'm going to save this file. I'm going to go over here to my page and tell it to reload, and now we see an ugly red background. <laughs> um, you can actually use many other colors than the ones that we can name. Uh, the color table here will show you some of the colors. There's different versions of this table, but what you can do here is find a color that you like, like uh, maybe one of these might not be so obnoxious. And here's the code FFBBEE. -E. I don't know if we can copy that. We can't, but we can go over here and say FFBBEE. Uh, -E. And what we should get then is a nicer looking background, hopefully. And that is a little bit nicer. So, in place of the color names, you can use this three section RGB code. Actually, what these are two hex digits that specify numbers from 0 to 255 of red, green, and blue. So this one, if we go back here to the color table, we can actually see that if we look at the reds, they have a stronger red component. If we look at something that has more blue in it, like these blues, you'll see that one is full on blue. The red, less, not much green in that one. Okay, so that's how you can actually decode these tables. But anywhere you can use a color name, you can also use a color code. So one of the things we can do here is change the background color. We can also change uh, the text color. Let's see if I can go back here. You can say text. So here if I wanted, uh, this may not look very good, but I'm going to change and use white text on this mauve background. Let's see what that looks like. And now it's not very readable. <laughs> but anyway, you, you get the idea. You can use those things to modify the behavior of those tags. And let's go back. So you can change the text color. You can change the visited or the links. And this visited um, option would allow you to set a color for the links you've already seen. And finally, there's a way that you can set a background image instead of a background color. So here, if I didn't want to use a color, Instead, I wanted to use an image. Let's go. Let's actually go find an image to use for the background. Let me go to uh, let's go to Google here, and let's just try to find an image that we might want to use. Let's let's use this one. Yeah, I, I would actually like to use this as part of my background image. So I'm going to tell it I want to copy the image location in here. I'm going to go in and say background equals and I'm going to paste in that link. I'll actually put quotes around this because I haven't been using quotes around the attribute values but if there's a space anywhere in the attribute value the quotes are required so I just put the, space, the quotes in there. In this case I don't see any spaces I don't think there are so let's go in and see what that did to our page so I'm going to save this go back here and tell it to reload it and you see it's tiled that image. I would tell you to be careful about this because it's difficult to read text a lot of times over the top of pictures unless you've ghosted those out or changed the transparency in some way to make text readable on top of it. So be careful about the use of images like this. But what I hope this has given you then is uh, just a basic kind of idea of how to create a web page from scratch. So that's it for this podcast. In the next one, we'll be looking at some basic tags, but I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you again soon.